Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Asma al Hajj. Today I'm going to talk about vitamin D deficiency. First of all, what is vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency is when you do not have enough vitamin D in your body in order to stay healthy. This is a problem because the body needs vitamin D to absorb calcium and calcium is one of the main building blocks of bones and vitamin D has a role in nervous, muscle and immune system. Now, the most common causes of vitamin D deficiency are decreased intake or absorption of vitamin D as in case of inadequate intake of vitamin D from food or due to malabsorption, gastric bypass or bariatric surgery, small bowel disease and pancreatic insufficiency. And it may be due to reduced sun exposure as inadequate sunlight exposure or false sunscreen use or darkly pigmented skin people it may be also due to increased hepatic catabolism as in case of patients taking anti-seizure medications where there is an increase in the catabolism of vitamin D into inactive metabolites and a decreased endogenous synthesis of vitamin D due to the loss of vitamin D binding proteins as in patients having nephrotic syndrome. And it may be due to end organ resistance to vitamin D as in patients having renal failure or hypopyrothyroidism or other common diseases. Many people ask this question, why vitamin D is important for our body? Why to take vitamin D supplements? The answer is, it's very important to take vitamin D because it supports bone health by enabling the absorption of calcium. It also promotes muscle health and regulates blood pressure. Vitamin D aids in cell growth, where it can act directly or indirectly to influence cell cycling, proliferation, and differentiation. It reduces cancer cell growth also. Vitamin D aids in weight loss, where it alters the storage and formation of fat cells. Vitamin D enhances the immunity and reduces the inflammation and controls the risk of infection. Now, what are the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency? How to know that we may have vitamin D deficiency? You may experience some bone pain, muscle aches, and you may have fatigue, hair loss, and some mood changes. Now, I'm going to talk about people who are at risk for vitamin D deficiency. They are people who spend most or all of their time indoors, for example, because they are in a nursing home or people having medical problems such as celiac disease that make it hard for them to absorb vitamin D. Patients having osteoporosis are also at risk for vitamin D deficiency because their bones are too weak. Also, patients who broke a bone too easily such as by falling down. What kind of food contains vitamin D? We can gain vitamin D either from drinks as milk, orange juice or yogurt, or from food as salmon, canned tuna fish, cereals, cod liver oil, and other kind of food. Many people think that if sun is one of the sources of vitamin D, so can I get extra vitamin D from the sun? The answer is no, because it's not a good idea to get vitamin D by spending time in the sun. This can lead to sunburn and increase your risk of skin cancer. Now, what are the long-term complications of vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency can lead to osteoporosis in adults where the bones become thin or brittle. The first sign may be a bone breaking as a result of a minor trauma. Or osteomalacia in children where the bones become soft resulting in bone deformities, dental problems, and fragile bones. Moving to vitamin D deficiency treatment. Now, how to treat vitamin D deficiency? The amount of vitamin D required to effectively treat vitamin D deficiency depends upon the baseline level of vitamin D and also upon the individual's vitamin D absorptive capacity and to some extent the non-genetic determinants of each individual. For patients with serum vitamin D level less than 12 nanogram per milliliter and not infrequently associated with hypocalcemia and osteomalacia, we treat with 50,000 international units of vitamin D orally once per week for 6 to 8 weeks and then 800 international units of vitamin D daily thereafter. Moving to patients with serum vitamin D levels of 12 to 20 nanogram per milliliter, we initially supplement with 800 to 1000 international units of vitamin D, then we repeat the lab test after 3 months to assure obtaining the goal. If serum goal is not achieved, higher doses may be recommended. 
However, if the vitamin D level is from 20 to 30 nanogram per milliliter, a 600 to 800 units of vitamin D may be sufficient to maintain levels in the target range. Finally, I'd like to advise you to examine your vitamin D levels because vitamin D can reduce your risk of cancer, muscle acts, cardiovascular disease, depression, diabetes, autoimmune disease, and osteoporosis. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation. Thank you all for listening.